sorry, I get a little sidetracked here. When you see them, you're like, oh, wow, I remember when we used to have those and we don't anymore. Uh, anyway, yeah, hopefully Beast Coast can surprise us all and we'll get a really good match here today. First ban, Nomad. We'll see what the Beast Coast respond with. Nomad is a little bit different, but it makes sense on Consulate. And Zero will be Beast Coast ban as well. So that's a, that's these are both Consulate-based attacker bans. A break from the Thatcher Maverick bans. We can't escape the Valkyrie ban, though. Not one bit. Mm -mm. It's interesting because Nomad and Zero both fulfill very similar roles. They tend to be flank watch specialists with the way that they're played in the current meta. Obviously, Zero tends to have a bit more flexibility as of late. He's got those yeah. four Argus cams that get thrown out. He's got the hard breach tool as well. Nomad's air jabs are going to go into oftentimes those anti-flank positions, as was pointed out. So this is interesting to me because two of the most pivotal flank watchers that we see teams often trot out in the North American League are off of the board. I want to speculate and say, could we potentially see gridlock? I think the answer to that is probably going to be no. Uh, oh. I, I don't imagine. I mean, she's, she's good on some flank watches. I don't know that she's got a lot of good applications on this map. It's too open. I have a soft spot for what she brings to the table, and I really like the F90 that she has as oh, well. Yeah. But, I mean, she's obviously got some significant downsides. The only time we really do tend to see her is on Cafe. Outside of that, she is seldom used. Mm. But that's obviously speculating about, speculating about operators that are not in the game. You've also got the Valkyrie and Mira joining on the defender side of things. Yeah, the Sonics will be beginning this matchup on defense. They're going to go downstairs. First things first. Bottom floor is a reliable site for some teams, not all. We've seen some teams actually completely avoid the bottom floor on Consulate when they have to play it. So far through this stage, all of the sites really have been about the same. The best one, though, statistically, has been the main lobby. That's after having been played three times. This will be the fourth time this map has been played through this stage. Um, now... It will be an extension upstairs. So even if you're going to defend the bottom floor, you have to delay it at least somewhat. Most of the time, you'll see a, a roam in the bathroom in that middle floor. This time, though, the Sonics are going for a much more elaborate full top floor roam with plenty of utility and investment on players up here. There's one of the new Rainbow Six Share skins, by the way, that we just saw in the hands of Super. He's got the secret skin, which is... Very reminiscent of Black Ice. I yeah. almost feel like that's cheating, by the way. <laughs> I feel like I feel like you if you're Ubisoft and a team submits a skin that looks like the Black Ice, you have to say no. Not allowed. Ooh. That's unfortunate, by the way, for Beast Coast. They lose out on that one drone as they're trying to dislodge the mute jammers from this garage panel. Obviously, that's just a joke, by the way. The secret skin is quite nice. You can get it in the store right now. Uh, the Sonics also have a skin that's available in the store. It's on the TCSG. East Coast, unfortunately, does not have a skin just yet. I'm sure we'll see a bunch throughout the course of this matchup. That looks like the BDS skin. Yes, it is on Yeti's SMG. That's another one that just came out very recently. Other than skins, though, we're now a minute in the action. Garage door's been opened up, and the focus right now appears to be on taking control of Piano. It's a very <laughs> pivotal part of this map. Uh, the back of that SMG 11 looks like uh, a certain number, Parker. Uh, right, right by the iron sights. If you ever see him on ADS... We'll get to see it again, but... What number, Michael? Nice. Um, I don't know, Parker. I don't know what number. It just makes me want to say nice. It is nice. I don't know it, what Parker? number you're talking about, Michael. The skin is nice, Parker. Nice. Anyway, um, <laughs> there it is. We still have plenty of roamers here for the Sonics, and none of them dislodged by the Beast Coast because they're not really putting any effort into it, frankly. They've got one attacker up by admin office, and it's a bit odd. The rest of Beast Coast is just set up outside of Garage. They will be punished vertically if Beast Coast does not put more emphasis upstairs. Well, it looks like with a minute to go, Beast Coast is going to take advantage of some oversights from the Sonics. Nitro Cell comes in, two kills from Sonics will immediately follow, and a third added to that one as Beast Coast are just getting toppled. Like dominoes, they fall. Rudy is the sole survivor. A 1v5, a flawless round for the Sonics denied. Yeti, a oh. team kill on the Grixer. I don't know exactly what was happening there, but... Blood for the blood god, I suppose. The rest of the Sonics collapse in the lone member of Beast Coast, and down he goes. Sonics oh, take round one. Once you see it, you can't unsee it. Uh, well played. Uh, for the record, I always thought the BDS logo was 
kind of playing off of that. I thought so, really? but I could be wrong. Of course. I, I only, no I only... designer, no designer in my eyes is going to look at that and let that go without somebody saying, now hold on a moment. <laughs> well, no, it look like anything else. It only looks like that because uh, the background that it's on is white and the middle part is also white. So it's yes, kind of like. Yes, that is true. Yeah, so it's it's just bl that middle bit is blending in, and so it makes it really obvious. Anyway, um, Attackers need to locate yeah, no, once you see, you can't unsee it. Anyway, the uh, the the the, the round we're getting sidetracked. The round there was well played by Sonics. Um, and I do still hold by what I said. I think that Beast Coast made a major mistake in not dealing with the vertical presence. Frankly, even if that utility that dis denied the plant what wouldn't uh wasn't successful, let's say that the C4 was shot midair. Um, or let's say that the gas canisters completely missed and the plant went down or it was starting to go down, I do think that the vertical play would have stopped that in its tracks. Um, there were just too many little pieces of control that Sonics had over their own site. No real good push opportunities for Beast Coast. And they, they need to create opportunities. They're not going to be handed them. Well, even though they are playing upstairs, this is not an upstairs defense. This is going to be lobby... Still remains to be seen if a top floor hold will come in. This tends to be the bomb site that is least favored by teams, so we'll see if that stands true. Although statistically best this stage so far. Oddly enough, the uh, the best defensive win rate at the moment though is 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 lobby piano, Michael. Yeah, I thought we were talking about lobby piano. No, sorry, I was okay. So you misunderstood what I was saying. Lobby piano is statistically the strongest site at the moment for yep. the defenders, sitting at sixty percent for the defense, forty percent for the attackers. Over yep. ten plays, beautifully well timed C four. By the way, read off of by the different members of the Sonics, and it's Yeti the one to get the kill onto that. That's planning and preparation. He knew what that would do. Rudy, the the worst rated player in North American League, who is playing on many times entry roles, who is mm. usually chalked to the gills with utility either on Zofia or on this sledge roll here on Consulate, is no more. And yet he is feeling one today. Two kills for him so far. He'll swing looking for a third, sacrificing his HP in the process. Sip and walks away with that one fully intact. And yet he is now going to head for the basement. All of this action happening on the second floor, and yet it is still a first floor defense, but teams know how crucial it is to take control of the top floor. Yeah, and there's still players to deal with upstairs. As you can see, Rexon hanging out by the bathroom. Grixer in CEO itself. Now down goes the bulletproof camera that Rexon had placed over by Big Desk, and that's going to give less information to the defenders. They'll have to peek with their faces now to take these fights, but that's been working out great for the Sonic so far, so I don't think they're feeling too much pressure off of that. Yeti is low, but he's already fallen back. Now it's sipping. Wow. Ooh. Deleted by Rexon. A nice shot there. We, we we didn't see it, but we can hear it. Clearly, precision work there from Rexon, and now it's just Anthony and Biologic. Oh, boy. The biggest stumble so far for Beast Coast through these two rounds is a lack of information. They thought they had control of this site, and in fact, in many ways, we thought the same in the previous round, but they stormed the gates, broke through that garage panel, and then they all fell one by one by one. This time around, all of the separate entries from Beast Coast have been met with aggression from the Sonics, and the Sonics have capitalized on every single bit of ignorance when it comes to this intel from Beast Coast. Now, Bio might be able to capitalize, but no, Kansan is ready and prepared for it. He sees another in line of sight. It's the last one left. Anthony, a flawless round denied yet again. So close for the Sonics. The close only matters in games of horseshoes and hand grenades, and well, neither were on the board for this one. The Sonics pick off Anthony, the final member remaining for Beast Coast, and it's 2-0 for Sonics. Don't play games with hand grenades, kids. I feel like that doesn't need to be said out loud. Well, you would think that, Parker. You would think that, but if you right. spent even a couple moments on Rainbow Six Twitter, you would realize that... That's just not true. It's You need to say it out loud. Yeah, it's, an, it's necessary. Um... Learning's hard. Oh, there's that C4, by the way. We get the top-down view of that. Uh, and speaking of learning, like, that is a really cool C4 to learn. So for those of you who missed it, Yeti placed that C4 on the, like, the I guess the wall that faces the Visa staircase. And it goes straight up to catch somebody coming off repel there. That is, it's right there. You're seeing it on your screen right now. That is a great C4 to know. Um, so thank you, Yeti, for teaching us that one. And he clearly, obviously, you know, he knew that one from uh, dry running. So I like to see stuff like that come through into the game. And it clearly shows the preparation that Sonics is putting into this map and the, the, how seriously they're taking this match in turn. So 
Well done there to Yeti. And just in general, uh, both of these rounds, there has been nothing at all positive to say about Beast Coast's attacks so far. Not uh, one thing that I can I can think of. Uh, normally, I try to find one thing and isolate it, be like, this was okay, even if you're taking an L. But so far, it's been Beast Coast completely checked out. Now, I hope that changes, and it needs to change. Otherwise, this is going to spiral out of control. Beast Coast were very enthused after making that roster move, dropping Ghost from the team, picking up Bio, and, well, I mean, it seemed like Bio coming in would hopefully address some of the issues that Beast Coast had so far through the matches that they've played in this stage. It doesn't appear that it's really done all that much. Beast Coast is still performing to the same level that we'd seen of them previously, and, you know, I'm obviously we can never guess what's going awry, whether it's coordination, people playing on poor rules, you know, Etc. But something for Beast Coast, very similar to what we saw to X set in the previous match. Something needs to change at some point because mm. the Sonics had a stumble in their very first match. But this is still a team that very firmly sat in the top five or the top four rather of and has the potential to absolutely be there. Now, it seems like on this particular defense that they're being a bit too brazen. Yet he falls. Mm. He was particularly strong in the previous round. He's gone. And then Kansan peaked as well. Now, if you're playing a team like Beast Coast and you think you, you can bully them, you might make some kind of silly plays. And it certainly seemed like that was what the Sonics were trying to do there when confronting Beast Coast. Okay, Parker, I'm a little bit worried here. I'm seeing a little bit of that, that older North American meta that I thought we were past after the six Invitational and NA teams got absolutely destroyed at that, was that SI. Losing? No, not losing. It's the, the whole roam idea of like, let's roam somewhere and then leave. And it actually ended up punishing the Sonics there so badly. They lost a lot of HP on Kins and they lost Yeti because they're trying to retreat from their roam positions and they're getting caught in that transition. So it's not the play. We've learned that that's not the play. We've learned it doesn't work in international competition. We've learned that you just need to create positions that you have the advantage in instead of creating a position that you're going to pretend to hold and then retreat from. It doesn't work in the larger stage, and it's going to punish teams like it just punished the Sonics. So this is not all good for the Sonics right now. And we'll see if they could carry this forward to a win. Sippin will get another kill, adding to Beast Coast Tally. There's his second, but super pushing for Visa. Able to re, not able to get two, though, as Rudy will swat him down. It's just Grixer who will get two inside of Visa and the Diffuser to boot. This is huge for Grixer. One of the newest players coming onto the Sonics roster and just in general to end the NAL. He has had a significant, uh, in, um, I guess, statement of a initial performance. And he's going to get his third, looking for the fourth. He'll find Rudy, but can't land the shot. The worst player in the NAL statistically will clutch up for his team and Beast Coast find their first round. Against last stage's highest rated player. Oh, the duality of Rainbow Six. Mm-hmm. That was fun. Well, that's where you end up if you're Beast Coast. And honestly, the Sonics made a ton of mistakes in that round. They played very fast, very loose at the beginning, and I think somewhat disrespectfully against Beast Coast. Agree. Now, a, a sn uh, an avalanche begins with just a couple snowflakes. Mm. Um, it doesn't immediately begin as an avalanche. So, <laughs> okay. And I know, I know, by the way, somebody is going to, somebody's going to barge into Twitter and be like, well, actually, I don't, I'm going to tell you this right now. I don't care. It's just trying to make a point. Just trying to make a point. A couple of the issues that the Sonics dealt with were totally self-inflicted at the beginning. They got a bit too aggressive. They played a, a style against Beast Coast in that round where they went for peaks. They played more free flowing. They didn't really hold map control the way they wanted to. They held it and then they immediately rotated and it, the Sonics play an often unpredictable yet structured style that is exhilarating to watch, and some rounds can go quite poorly if somebody ends up making a mistake. Losing Yeti, who is so often the one of the backbones of this team, next to Grixer obviously wasn't ideal. But when you're a team like Sonics, you got some depth, you can rely on other players. But then the rest of the team didn't particularly seem to play much structured. Outside of that, they just kind of hung around. They lost a couple gun duels, and then they went swinging for the entire three minutes, and it almost worked. Bricks are miraculously holding it together, but ultimately, Teller's Archives breaks in favor of Beast Coast, and they get their very first round on the board. I always thought the map designer who put the fans in admin office was just kind of like, just like randomly place them. Just like, just throw some fans in there. I, yeah, I mean, it's like... It doesn't make three. Any, it's not like it... I would this, this, like to know, I would like to know what Ubisoft, who did that, by the way. Oh, no. Uh-oh. 
That was close, but a full miss there. Rudy uh, has full it HP. It made the noise of hitting a body, though. It did, yeah. That's it made decent. the noise that at least a, a bullet or two connected, and yet you can see that that was not the case, so... Gotta love it. Oh, no. Can Kansan, by the way, we talked about early on the Sonics being a bit disrespectful of Beast Coast, and this particular example that we just saw, Kansan could have been one to disrespect them. He saw there was somebody on repels by the window on balcony, and... We tried to take the fight to them, and it could have ended up with him dying. He's still under heavy watch and is in a tough position as he's been yellow pinged, and they know exactly where he is as they'll try to isolate him and finish him off. But oh my goodness, Grixer just guns down, sipping. It was a bait and switch, and now Grixer's position to possibly get another. And it's going to be a push no, into Visa. No, no there way. it is. Cycle! Two for Rexen. Down go Rudy and Bio. What an aggro push. Really shouldn't have worked out, but there it is. Beast Coast effectively checked out of the round by that. Absolutely incredible play. A and talk about, talk about in some ways disrespectful. You should not be getting away with that kind of thing, but. Yeah, he's just pushing into Visa. He's That's just, strong. he's just swinging. Anthony, by the way, is, is he running the Mexico charm? Announced earlier today that the next Rainbow Six Major will be in Mexico, held in August, so. That's uh -oh. exciting. I've actually never been to Mexico before, so assuming Only... that we get to physically travel, because mm -hmm. I will be fully vaccinated as of Friday. Yeah. So anywho, yeah. 40 seconds left. Kansas is row above. He takes out Fozo and Anthony is the last one alive in a 1v5. There have been two opportunities for the Sonics to win a flawless round. Will it happen this time? Yes! Finally! They get a flawless one. Sonic's up three to one. Okay. Um. Yeah, I. I mean, I. I get really good. Uh, you get some really good tacos in California. You get good Calmex here. Um, depending on where you go, of course. Uh, Tex-Mex is good too. But it's gonna be nice to try some actual, just you know, Mexican food in Mexico. I've never been to Mexico City, uh, before or any of like the major places around Mexico. So I'm like interested to see where exactly we're gonna be going there. And yeah, it's it's gonna be fun, Parker. I'm, I'm looking forward to it. I am as well, obviously, assuming that we can go there. By the way, well, we can talk about Mexico a little bit more. Hmm? The two teams that use the exact same color, or at least very close to the same color, sometimes you can get a little bit confused. That's Beast Coast logo in the top right. They're the ones taking a timeout, realizing that things are not exactly going in their favor. They've only picked up one round, and I don't want to take it away from Beast Coast, but in many ways, the greatest assist they got on that round was the Sonics not playing particularly adeptly. Yeah, I mean, I, 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 the reason why I avoided the analysis there, again, is like, it's very specific. I'm just I'm seeing a lot more of the same here. And Parker said it perfectly. The only round we've seen Beast Coast take is because Sonics handed it to them, frankly. Um, and they, Sonics have corrected that play. The mistakes that the Sonics made on the one round where they forfeited, they, they, they've corrected that course. They are not playing that same style. Uh, and, you know, that's active learning. That's great for Beast Coast, or sorry, excuse me, for the Sonics. Uh... It's the color, Parker. <laughs> Trips me up. No, but uh. anyway, if you want to support the Sonics based on this great performance that they at least are putting up right now in this match, you can go ahead and pick up their their uh, skin in the store. There is an eSports tab to make it nice and easy for you to find it when you're shopping in Siege. And it does directly support the Sonics, as all of these team skins do. So if you want to support a team that, you know, Sonics or otherwise, check out the store, see if they've got one in there. Uh, pick that skin up, and it's a great way to, you know, help them out. Yeah, those fans are bothering me now. I don't know yeah, why you I had know. to draw it to my attention, I'm by the sorry. Way. It's the three at the bottom right really bug me, especially. It's like, why? What is that? Is my there like part is, can we go back up top? Yeah. Look at, so, okay, so there's three cubicles, right? The yeah. left one and the middle one both have the fan, but the guy on the right, they're just like, nah. <laughs> you sit yeah. you sit and you suffer yeah oh but, uh, they, but they blow the air around the whole room he'll still benefit shut up you're ruining my you're ruining my point the immersion is already broken i think it's just the like the thing. rugs it's like the rugs in villa it's like who right. would decorate a house like this why are there so many rugs i mean we have a lot of rugs on this map too now that you mention it it's an odd amount of rugs. Yeah, and then John just pointed out, Blue said, why are there roots in the dirt tunnel of Clubhouse when there are no trees above it? Well, John, that's because they cut uh, down the trees and they paved over it, but they couldn't pay for root extraction. 
I mean, that's true. It is actually like getting rid of the stumps and the roots is is like a whole thing. I mean, that's that's a lot. And I mean, no, it, he's very it, upset. He's he's putting sad faces in the. What did he say? In our chat, he made a sad face. Oh, okay. I'm sorry, well, John. You're right. Why do they have roots there? Down goes Kans and Rudy. Having Speaking of roots, the best. <laughs> Rudy himself, the root. Is having the best performance he's had so far, I believe, and the best performance for his team as well. Foza will add to it. Down goes Grixer. Now we're looking at a three versus five. This is once again the type of mistakes that we were seeing made by the Sonics the last time they lost a round. This could be the second round for Beast Coast. It's certainly a better and most promising round start for them. They've still got 90 seconds to go, and this time around, at least from what we've witnessed, the Sonics are not the ones giving them a leg up. So this is a hard-earned victory for Beast Coast up to this point. Yeti with the army crawl to try and take up some more space inside of the lobby. Super not too far off of him in bathroom, Rex and down below. Those are the three players from the Sonics. Rex is now spotted out by a drone, or at least thinking he might be, so he'll go back to Zulu, where Bench is located, and now look over towards Yellow. Continue to walk through in that direction. One of the smokes, the last smoke from Anthony will go off. There goes the smoke and the toxic canisters from Super now down for the count. Yeti swings, nice shot on a bio plant going down, one on repel. Yeti might have to go for the run out here and he's gonna do just that, catches one. Diffuser planted from Anthony, so the clock will begin to run. The Sonics in a 2v3, make that a 1v3. Rudy, the star of the show in this particular round with Anthony on the follow-up gives Beast Coast their second round and their best performance so far in this map. It's still a 3-2 lead for the Sonics. Rudy trying to dig his way out of the bottom of the leaderboard in the NAL. And he might actually be successful uh, if he keeps this up going into the second half. It's a distinct possibility. This is a much closer match than uh, money, many of us expected, though. For me, I'm still getting the vibe that... Remember I told you at the beginning of the match, Parker? I think that this is still going to be like the expected result. It's just going to take the maximum amount of time. I'm still getting that vibe. I am, you know, I thought that at the, at zero zero. I'm still feeling that now at two three. Um, so we'll see. I once again, I mentioned it during when it was happening. I'll say it again now. The Sonics just made a lot of really weird mistakes through uh, the early stages of that round. A big part of it was the way that they're roaming, leaving themselves exposed to the you know, to Beast Coast picking off players. Part of that does come down to uh, the fact that we are playing Consulate. It's just a map that plays out like that. Another part of it obviously comes down to active decision-making on the Sonic's part. All right, well, uh, it seems like we are going to have a rehost as everybody got Thanos snapped from existence or at least half of the server did. Dun, 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 dun. We're on a technical pause right now. We'll await a potential explanation uh, from the admins, but for now, we just wait and we see. You if we were, if we were to summarize what we've seen so far, mm. Beast Coast's first round victory on Tellers in many ways, I think, as we pointed out a couple times, and I don't think we need to continue repeating it, is that, yeah, it's it's characterized as the SQ squad kind of threw a couple advantages that they had working at their favor and Beast Coast capitalized off of it. And it's good that Beast Coast did. It still came down really close to that 1v1 at the end. Yeah. 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 But round, round five... That lobby take by Beast Coast was pretty respectable in terms of what we've seen out of them so far through this stage. Yeah, it was a well-coordinated attack, but it also was it was much the same as the uh, the earlier loss that uh, loss that we had from Sonics. I, I you know I, I don't want to say that they're too dissimilar. A lot of it's coming down to the mistakes made by the Sonics peaking early and giving off picks. Um, I think it could be easily corrected by the Sonics. I think they can not make those mistakes pretty, pretty, pretty simply. But again, a big part of that is consulate. So at least, yeah, well done to Beast Coast punishing Sonics for making the mistakes that they did make. Um, this is now going to be the last round of the first half when we actually get back into it. Um, and this, uh, this time that the players now have to discuss uh, what they've experienced so far is going to be good for... Well, frankly, both teams to kind of reset and think about how they can win this final round of the first half. It was an audio issue, by the way, that was the reason for the rehost. So these teams will have some time to reconvene and speak with each other. This is not, and I want to make a distinction here, this is not a tactical timeout. 
So because of that, there is no full-blown communication and strategic talk with their coach. As far as we are aware, the coaches are not permitted to speak during this time, which means that Joe, who's behind the bench for the, uh, for the Sonics, is not capable of talking to his team right now as they are on your screen here. It does, however, allow the Sonics to discuss strategy, just as Beast Coast can as well. And you've got a strategic mind on that Sonic squad with Super. Bio obviously being brought in for his strategy and IGLing previously and the experience that he brings to teams. He will certainly be helping settle down Beast Coast. You can argue that when these pauses happen, whether it gives a benefit to the team that is struggling or can act as a hindrance, given the fact that Beast Coast just won a round and it could blunt their momentum, I think either viewpoint is particularly compelling, and I don't think there's a clear-cut answer as to whether this benefits the team that's ahead or the team that is trying to close the gap. But regardless, you can see that, well, we can only see from the Sonics, because we haven't had East Coast on our screen, that the Sonics are taking ample time to talk while we are in this pause. Again, though, the coaches cannot weigh in here, so that's worth noting. Um... Since it's a technical, it's just the players. Uh, what we will see, though, is the match actually hopefully starting up pretty soon here. By the way, if you're wondering what everyone's fiddling with in their hands, those are hand warmers, electric hand warmers. We've seen some of the uh, some of the the disposable ones before, but you know, getting those reusable, chargeable ones is uh, it's nice. Um, we've got the game up, so we get to play. Huzzah! The Sonics. They will go back to the lobby. The lineups will be the same. It's all picking up from where we left off in the prep phase of the last round of the first half. Over to the lobby we go. Interesting. This will be the last defense, by the way, for the Sonics. Yep, they yep. obviously didn't like what they saw on that lobby take before and are keen to correct some of those issues. This will be their third time going to this bomb site. There were two other sites that were open and available for them. Tellers, Archives versus the top floor. Now, we mentioned that the top floor probably wouldn't see much play here. Even though it does have a 50% win rate, it's only been played two times in the North American League so far this stage. Regardless, Lobby is the most defender-favored site right now. You noted that at the start of the broadcast when we were talking about it in round number two. Yep, yep. And you noted it when we were discussing the site selection somewhere in round, was it, four? Something like that. My memory's not as good as yours. Um, it's been noted, and the Sonics are clearly aware of that as well. So they go back there. Um, the top floor roam, I think, has been the biggest problem for me on the Sonics defense. Their insistence on early roam aggressive, mid roam retreat has been punishing them time and time again. Really, they ought to just pick, all right, I'm going to either hold this roaming position in admin office and slow you down, or I'm gonna, you know, play so passive that you just, you have no opportunity to pick me off, or something that doesn't offer opportunity to Beast Coast. There's so many different choices, but we've seen the Sonics get punished on the oh, retreat so often, and that's what needs to not happen here. It was it Yeti that was the first to die previously when we were looking at Lobby back in round number? Yes. Was it, was it round number three? Yeti died unnecessarily above. Don't remember, but yes. Blew a little bit too close to the sun. He dropped into main lobby and got caught off by the player holding the main door. It sounds like that's the visa wall that's blowing up over top of the visa stairs where Yeti is not going to be able to play as aggressively as he wants to. If he tries to head towards those stairs, he'll be punished for it if somebody happens to be posted up in that area. This is very brazen, and I think Yeti realizes maybe don't overstay your welcome and get out of here as quickly as you can but he's got an opening on that window and he can see if there's an upside down repel he's still got a nitro cell in hand but being able to pull that off is unlikely especially once that front door gets opened up it's fozo who is the target that yeti will spot if the zofia vaults on in towards projector Currently, Fozo's job is just to hold down the angles on the top floor and prevent rotation. He's done an all right job of that so far. He didn't punish Yeti for his retreat, but at least he could still control things from here. And he's got the you know, the positional advantage that uh, East Coast have been vying for for now two minutes. That's the big thing, though. Two whole minutes. Time is wasting away. You haven't picked off a single defender. In fact, now you're going to lose the first player. Rudy goes down to Rexon, and Rexon will make it in safe to the building. 
just fine. No cutoff at all from Beast Coast. He'll even reassess a uh, position on the top floor as Grixer gets sipping in Connector. There's another for Rexen. He's at the top of yellow. He's assisting his fellow Roamer. And now Beast Coast find themselves up against a wall as Rexen gets his third kill. No fourth. F2 is better in that situation. Bio is able to get one. Reloading, though, and gun back up. Pistol for Grixer cannot out-contest Biologic. With control above in only 20 seconds, he's got to find three more. It's not very likely. It's certainly possible, but as the time starts to tick away, this is essentially all but over. A 4-2 half for the Sonics is awesome. We'll see if it could be a 3-3. There's another for Bio. He only needs to find two more, but two seconds to do it? It's not possible. Yeti will shut him down, and the Sonics will take the first half. So of the six rounds that the Sonics played on defense, as that's the first half in the books, they walk away with a 4-2 lead, switching sides. On a map like Consulate heading into today, it was a 49% win rate for the defenders, 51% for the attackers. So pretty much as even as you're going to find in Rainbow Six, unless, of course, it's you play one map and one ends up being a draw. Can't be a draw anymore, though, because there's overtime. So with that said, the Sonics, of their four victories, their four victories were so dominant that all four of them were a 1v5. Now, they only ended up with a single flawless round out of those four, but up until the dying moments of two of those rounds, a flawless was very possible and was almost immediately traded back after one member of the Sonics sacrificed themselves. So not only are the Sonics winning, but they are winning huge, absolutely huge. Beast Coast's two-round victories came down to a 1v1 and then a much more dominant showing on that fifth round in their win over Lobby. So the score line that you see at the top, despite favoring the Sonics, doesn't really tell you the whole story, that when the Sonics are winning, they are dominating doing that, and even when they're losing the round, it is still very close. That bodes well for the Sonics now as they switch to attack and Beast Coast heads to defense. The first defense for Beast Coast is going to be downstairs on Garage. I don't know if this is going to change the flow of the match, to be honest, Parker. The attacks for Beast Coast, we saw some um, signs of life. But I, I, it's obviously going to come down to how proficient are the, uh, the Sonic's attacks here. By the way, I just have to say it, Susquehanna, it's been so long since I've said their name fully, Susquehanna Sonics. Well, it's because they dropped that from their branding, as far as I'm aware. Yeah, it's it's so weird, though, to not have that. You know, it's, it just, it's like a disconnect. Anyway... I had to say it once because it's fun to say, even if it's not part of their main branding anymore. But the Sonics, how proficient are they on their attacks? That's the big question here, because I honestly think that the, the Beast Coast attacks were a little bit lackluster, and it's part of why we saw a 4-2 half. Remember, this is one of the most balanced maps in the NAL right now. It's got a 49% defensive win rate going into this match. So this should be a very definitive advantage right now for the Sonics. So they should be able to carry this forward. It all just depends on if they've got the strategy underway here. And if, if their defense is anything to go on, they probably do. So if you look at the lineups right here for the Sonics, the only thing that I'm really noticing other than the Buck being maybe a little out of meta on a map like Consulate when Sledge is in play is that finally a Thatcher is being brought. Thatcher has not been banned up to this point. And I mean, he's not going to be, but hasn't been played up to this point. He managed to escape the ban phase where Nomad and Zero were the two operators that were taken out of action. So every single time you have to wrestle with opening it up, and Beast Coast did have some challenges getting the garage open in their second attempt back in the fourth round that ultimately led to the Sonics winning flawlessly. A Thatcher could have potentially been a huge asset here. It just was not part of their core. It'll be interesting to see the way that SQ uses it. No early engagements just yet. A little bit of poking here and there. Grixer will spot sipping, but not land the shot. The window of opportunity is too short. Vertical control established here for the Sonics, for the most part. They're going to be able to open up above the site, but they still need to deal with Bio, who is playing in the bathroom. He's going to be a problem later on, if not dealt with sooner rather than later. So that problem persisting. Bio is trying to peek out to see if he could work some type of pick. The vertical play still working. Sippin, very aggressive by the main lobby, and he'll give his presence away. Bio has made his way back to the site, although just with a sliver of HP. Well, there's your very first kill by Sippin. Right now, patrolling lobby, he won't be able to do anything more than that. Rexon takes him out of action, and then the Sonics just absolutely clobber Beast Coast down and up wow. the board. 
Anthony and Fozo, last ones left alive, and we'll see what they can put together as Anthony will govern over that hallway looking towards yellow stairs. Fozo over by White Van. He's watching to see if anybody's going to try to enter through that breach, but he is losing his footing. The ceiling above him disappearing very quickly, and, well, he's gone now as well. Too many people from the Sonics to watch, and as Anthony tries to retake the site, it's Rexon to stop him in his mm. tracks. Their very first attack is successful, and the Sonics will stretch their lead. They're up 5-2. Well, frankly, Parker, I did expect the Sonic's attacks to be solid. I didn't think that they were going to be that solid. Um, all points accounted for by the Sonics. They knew there was a roamer in the bathroom. They accounted for that. They dealt with it. However slowly, they dealt with it. Bio made it back to the site, but with very little HP. The vertical play did not wait for the problem to be dealt with. It was influenced, it influenced the site directly and immediately. The wall... For your garage got opened up way before the rest of the execution. That is great efficiency. That is the way you are supposed to do it. A lot of teams leave opening the wall till later in the round, and they always run out of time. Not so here for the Sonics. They get it done. They get their clear upstairs. They open above. They do it all with time to spare. And once it comes to blows, Sonics are winning almost every single fight. A small sample size. It's only one attacking round. You think it's going to change, though? No. But I don't think that, but it's entirely possible. The, the thing that really stands out to me is, once again, that was another entirely dominant round from Sonics, right? On a it, different it, half. It, and it, exactly. And it stretches back to the first half, like I said. Mm. It's not even just that Sonics are winning. It's how lopsided the wins are. When you are forfeiting only a couple deaths over the five rounds that you've won, and even the rounds that your opponents are winning are still coming down to 1v1s or 1v2s or 1v3s, then there's obviously a different story than that scoreboard suggests. If Grixer hits that final shot to get the 4K against Rudy, this is a 6-1 game. It's effectively over at that point. So, I mean, that's the problem that is in a game where it is so imbalanced, and that's what we've seen out of this matchup so far. Now, frankly, I don't really know what Beast Coast are capable of changing up. It was talked about by the analysts that the Sonics have been favoring this map by Consulate, a map like Consulate, quite a lot. So clearly they're moving past their clubhouse Oregon days where those were the only two maps they like to play. And good for them, frankly. Teams are going to start banning your best maps against you, and your map pool is going to dry up very quickly. You saw what happened to teams with bad map pools at SI. They went nowhere in a hurry other than being eliminated. <laughs> yeah. It, it, it's... it's SI was an interesting thing. It, it, it showed a lot of the contrast between teams, and we're seeing some distinct contrast being drawn here as well. Um, I, I, I don't say... I won't say this is anything like SI, but you could clearly see the difference between the performance of Beast Coast and Sonics, at least so far. And while there have been some good rounds for the Beast Coast... Uh, for Beast Coast, I guess I should say. Um, overall, it's been pretty lackluster. Right now, they're trying to hold up on the top floor, and I like that they're trying to hold these positions, not just, oh, yeah, we'll hold them for a bit and then give up on them later. No, 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 no. They're stacking all their utility up here to try and maintain a top floor presence. Now, so far, it's wasted a lot of the attacker's utility and a lot of the attacker's time. So this has been a fruitful endeavor for Beast Coast upstairs, and they're going to be able to make it even worse as they continue to lodge themselves in that top floor. We're going to see one of the castle barricades fall, the one, of course, over by Copier, and Kansan's up there with Rexon. Look at these silhouettes. There are two members from Beast Coast just inches away, and if Kansan can get the drop on them, then this will go up very well. Super collects two, though. They both drop. The Sonics are pulverizing Beast Coast, wow. and they are doing so well on this entry. Rudy and Anthony out of action. Those are your two roamers. Those are the two that are tasked with getting the kills for your team on the entry points or at least wasting as much time as possible. The question will be with 35 seconds remaining, Michael, have they wasted enough time here or not? Uh, the answer is yet to be determined with the man advantage outweighing that time advantage. But the Sonics definitely need to start picking things up. There's still a C4 in the pocket of Bio. And despite Super getting his third kill now, Beast Coast could win this off time. It's all going to come down to the UMPs on Beast Coast. Fozo's gone now. It's just Bio, and he's... <laughs> it's another flawless round, Parker. And Yeti is letting them know, and rightfully so, as we head to, I believe, match point at this point. Another flawless round for the Sonics. The pattern continues to hold. Not just round wins, but 
dominating performances in those rounds. Unfortunately, <sighs> because we did have a rehost, we don't have an accurate look at the kills and the deaths in this lobby right now. So we can't go back and reference those first four or five rounds before we did see that rehost. Rehost obviously coming in in between rounds five and six. But since the rehost, the Sonics have won all three rounds. Nearly flawless in round seven. It was almost a flawless in six. Bio picked up three basically impactless frags at the tail end of that round, but it still obviously adds to the stats that Bio has and Beast Coast will have. But then round seven, domination. They lose one player. Round eight happens. They lose no players. Now it's match point for the Sonics. So for Beast Coast, what do you do at this point? You took your time out at the tail end of round four hasn't really paid any dividends. You picked up one round. Other than that, this is a very tough matchup for Beast Coast, and it continues on with the rash of touch, tough games that they've had and tough matches that they've had so far since the start of this stage. Yeah, I don't... I mean, just as we mentioned earlier, Parker, when we were talking about it, I don't see this getting any better. A big part of that last round was the fact that those two roamers in admin office, remember how I was praising them about how they're holding their position and they're making top floor clear difficult. Well, guess what they did, Parker? They set up on the Visa admin office drop and they were trying to fall through it to escape with only 40 seconds left on the clock. They could just stay there, take some fights and maybe have a chance, but instead, no, no, no. They get on the drop, super kills them from the Visa window and that's just two freebies for him. Now you have no chance of influencing the round. We've learned this lesson already. The six Invitational taught NA this lesson. If you're going to roam, roam. Uh, anyway, having not learned it, Beast Coast get punished. And now we're at a 6-2 situation. Poorly timed C4 there from Anthony. I don't know what he heard. I didn't hear it, but I'm half deaf. So maybe it's just my ears. Literally half deaf, by the way, for the people wondering. That wasn't a joke. Yep. So. I not hear anything out of my right ear. Hey, I speculate we might see a gridlock, by the way. Hey, there it is, Yeti. Pumped to, pumped to see that. Rexon, by the way, engaged in the very first alteration or altercation. There goes Rudy. So in round number nine, yet again, first pick goes in favor of the Sonics. They have been exceptional on these opening duels so far. And as we said, their dominance round through round could potentially continue here. Now, obviously, hard to determine that. Sippin's going to swing through the doorway to try to connect on something. Doesn't net a single kill. Doesn't even look like there was a point of damage that was really done. He will fall off, and Rexon is ready and, and waiting with Yeti inside of Visa droning himself in. There's still presence on that second floor that the Sonics are trying to hunt down, and it's Cans in the one to lead the charge. Well, Super, as he has been doing, performing on that Fragmite, he's going to go for another with Pistol out. That's brazen, and Anthony will punish him for that. But in turn, Cans at the top of Spiral Staircase will have his re- it's just sipping in Fozo now. And this is looking a lot like every attack round we've seen from the Sonics thus far. And likewise, they've all been wins for the Sonics. It's going to have to be a breakout performance for Fozo and Sippin. There's a nice shot for Sippin by the main door. Down goes Grixer. He loses most of his HP, though. Rendered down to about 30. Fozo above is going to be the key player now in this clutch position. Fozo could potentially make some noise here. Still 30 seconds left for the Sonics. Yeti getting the diffuser down. Marks Fozo baited into it by Rexon from above. Sippin will have to save this round in this match for his team. In a 1v3, diffuser goes down. He'll start with one and look for more. He knows that he's got them. He takes out Rexon. It's cans and him in a 1v1. Sippin can walk away with this one. A heroic play for Beast Coast and potential momentum to boot. An explosion above, and Sippin will go on to that diffuser. Do pros fake? That's the real question. But Kansan sees him, tries to pick away, and finally gets him through the debris. Nobody from Beast Coast bothers to tell him to stop. Probably very close to getting it. 7-2 in favor of the Sonics. That one's in the books. What a great try there at the end. Almost. Um, came close. But yeah, Yeti, Yeti's expressions, I think, really sell this one. Man's working hard not to work. <laughs> Yeti is working so hard not to fit in his jersey, by the way. Anyway, um, <laughs> uh, yeah, no, they're rightfully proud of that one. Sonic's definitely earned that. Uh, honestly, though, Parker, I think that could have been a 7 0, frankly. There was no, a lot Absolutely. of the rounds, a lot of the rounds that the Sonics lost, is it's just that. It's the Sonics losing them, not necessarily Beast Coast winning them. That's my main takeaway from that match.
I, I will say that I don't think a 7-0, I think a 7-1, because the one lone mm. round that Beast Coast won in, I believe it was Lobby, mm. actually was put together very, very nicely. There yeah, were maybe. very limited things in that entire map that Beast Coast are going to walk home happy with. And not trying to put down a team and not trying to put down individual players' performances, but that was a pretty miserable showing from Beast Coast. They had issues with coordination. They had issues being in sync. They had issues with droning. They had issues on defense with roaming effectively, being able to hold positions, winning gun duels. There were a lot of things that Beast Coast are going to look at in that matchup and just frankly have to completely change. And I don't know what they are going to do, but that's not our job. That's their job to sort that one out because that was as that was even more lopsided than I think the 7-2 scoreline shows us. One so, thing. One thing is it's it's possible off of that because Rudy had some good performances. Sorry to cut you off, but Rudy had some good performances. Maybe he'll get off the bottom of the leaderboard. I, I, it's possible. I, I, I'm gonna check it later today to see if that's what happens. We will we'll look at the stats. Like I said, it's hard to it's hard to gauge because when the rehost happened, we lost all the stats from the previous five rounds, and those two rounds are where right. Beast Coast took their two round victory. So, with that said. That's half of our matchups today. Just like yesterday, it's been a very brisk pace that have been set by these teams. We'll see if the two matches that follow these are equally fast, but it's not going to be our job to cast that action. That'll be up to Blue and Stokes. Before we go anywhere, we have a commercial break, and then we'll be back with the analysts. Sit tight. We'll see you soon.